250 people on the job at these plants and 800 workers across the state. Gamesa has partnered with Bucks County Community College to create a Green Jobs Academy that serves as a pipeline for new workers as the company expands. And there are other companies pursuing clean energy along these streets as well. This has made a difference in this community. It's made a difference for folks like Jim Bowers. Is Jim around? Where's Jim? There's Jim right there. Hey, Jim. See, I heard about Jim because he lost his job when the mills closed, but then he be pretty soon working again in the shadow of where he spent 25 years in the steel industry. Now he's here. And, and there, there was a quote that, uh, that we got from Jim. He said, I was forced into retirement. After I was forced into retirement, nobody would hire me for any kind of decent money. Then I saw an ad looking for steel workers to join Gamesa, and now I'm happy to contribute to something that's important. skills, maybe haven't gotten a chance. And there's no reason why they can't be working in a place that's doing some important things. The times are still tough. A lot of people out there are still looking for work. And I'll be honest with you, not every manufacturing job that used to be here from the steel companies are going to come back. Because if you go to a steel plant now these days, it may take 10 workers to produce what it used to take 100 workers to produce, just because of automation and new technologies. But Jim's story should give us hope. It, it should give us some idea of the promise of clean energy for our country. Let me just say this one last thing, and then I want to take some questions. None of this is going to be easy. When people, when politicians tell you something's going to be easy, they're not telling you the truth. If it was easy, somebody would have already done it and taken credit for it and had a photo op. Reducing our dependence on oil, doubling the clean energy we use, helping to grow our economy by securing our energy future, that's going to be a big challenge. That's going to require effort. It's going to require ingenuity. It's going to require us coming together. It's going to require us getting past some of the petty politics that we play sometimes. But we can meet that challenge. We're not going to always agree with each other on everything. We live in a big country. We've got a robust democracy. And that's fine. But we should agree on some basic things. We should be able to agree on developing clean energy and, and reducing our defense on foreign oil. We should be able to agree that we need to invest in things like our roads, our bridges, our infrastructure. Because we used to have the best infrastructure in the world, we don't right now. Other countries have gone past us, and if we were investing in our infrastructure, we'd be putting more people to work. You know, I, I don't expect everybody to always agree with me, but coming here today, I was reminded of what I said right here three years ago, back when uh, it, it wasn't sure that I was going to win the election. I mean, you guys couldn't pronounce my name. But here's what I said. I, I said, I am not a perfect man and I will not be a perfect president, but I can promise you this. I will always tell you where I stand. I will be honest with you about the challenges we face and how we can solve these problems. And I will take what I hear from you, your voices, your struggles, your hopes, your dreams. That's what I'm going to be thinking about every single day when I'm in the White House. And I have kept that promise. I have kept that promise. I'm thinking about you guys every single day of the I'm going to keep pushing and I'm going to keep fighting for you. With all that's going on in the world, with all the challenges we're facing, that's what I think about every single day when I wake up. What matters to you? I want to make sure everybody who wants a job can find one, everybody can pay their bills, everybody can raise their kids. And say, give them a better life. And that's what all of us should be thinking. 
Some of you may have heard uh, the latest argument in Washington, uh, our, the fight over last year's budget. Keep in mind, we're not arguing about this year's budget, we're arguing about last year's budget. It makes it tough to win the future when you haven't passed the budget from last year. So I asked Congress to send me a budget that makes some serious spending cuts, but still invests in things like clean energy, still invests in research, still invests in infrastructure, still invests in education, investments that are, are critical for us to be able to compete with any country in the world. That's what I asked for. I asked for it several months ago. Now, after weeks of negotiations, we've now agreed to cut as much spending as the Republicans in Congress originally asked for. I've got some Democrats mad at me, but I said, you know what? Let's get past last year's budget. Let's focus on the future. So we've agreed to a compromise, but somehow we still don't have a deal. Because some folks are trying to inject politics in what should be a simple debate about how to pay our bills. I mean, there's stuff in all kinds of issues in there, abortion, and the environment, health care, you know. There, there are times to have those discussions, but that time's not now. Right now we need to just make sure that we pay our bills and that the government stays open. If we don't reach common ground by Saturday, the federal government shuts down. And some of you may not, not be that sympathetic. You may say, well, you know, let it shut down. What do I care? But here's the thing. When government shuts down, it means that that small business owner who's waiting uh, to get a loan, suddenly nobody's there to process it. He may not get that loan, and that business may not open. And whoever he was planning to hire, suddenly he may not have that job that he was counting on. It may turn out that somebody who's trying to get a mortgage can't have their paperwork processed by the FHA. Now, the person who was going to sell the house, what they were counting on, they can't get it. Folks who were planning a vacation to Yellowstone, well, it turns out national parks, suddenly you're closed, you're out of luck. You may have to try to figure out if you can get your money back for that resort you were going to stay at. I mean, you know, these, these are things that affect ordinary families day in, day out, and it affects our economy right at the time when our economy uh, is getting momentum. We have the best jobs report we had had in a very long time this past Friday. But you know what? Companies don't like uncertainty, and if they start seeing that suddenly we may have a shutdown of our government, that could halt momentum right when we need to build it up, all because of politics. I do not want to see Washington politics stand in the way of America's progress. At a time when you're struggling to pay your bills and meet your responsibilities, the least we can do is meet our responsibilities to produce a budget. That's not too much to ask for. That's what the American people expect of us. That's what they deserve. You want everybody to act like adults, quit playing games, realize that it's not just my way or the highway. How many folks are married here? When was the last time you just got your way? That's not how it works, right? Uh, he, he lifted his wife's hand up, uh, you know, no. I, I, I mean, the fact is, is that you have to make compromises. As a family, that's what we are, the American family. So Democrats and Republicans need to get together, work through their differences, keep the government running so we can focus on keeping this economy growing, focus on things like clean energy, Driving getting down gas prices, that's our job. That's what people want to see, results. You deserve no less than that. So this is a challenging time for America. We've been through the worst recession since I was, before I was born. 